Hi guys, Tom Morrison here, and today I want to cover piriformis syndrome, and I feel really sorry for this guy because he gets blamed for so much whenever there is so many other muscles in your hip. In fact, let's list them. We're gonna give you one of the best hip mobility drills in a second, but first, let me set the scene so that we can change your mindset and how you actually think about your overall hip mobility. So imagine you're sitting on a bus and there's someone on the bus that really, really smells. Your options are either just sit there, take the smell, not knowing who it is. You can maybe try and move around the bus to try and get away from the smelly person, but it's hard to sort of know who it is that actually smells because everyone sort of looks okay. Or you could never get the bus again. Say so this is a bus you have to get every day. You could just never get that bus again. Change everything you do just to avoid that bus in case that smelly person's on it again. Or you could campaign to get everybody on the bus aware of personal hygiene and make it the best smelling bus this side of the Milky Way. That is how you deal with the performance muscle. The piriformis muscle may be your site of pain. Yes, it may be tight and stretching it will probably help alleviate the symptoms a little bit. But you have to remember that it's the part of that bigger hip complex. And if you are missing out on any of those muscles being strengthened just a little bit, they can start to pull the piriformis and that's why it's the one that seems to get the most blame because it's just sort of like, it's definitely there, it's definitely that muscle and people get really obsessed about it and you can spend thousands going to physiotherapists and rolling your glutes every day and stretching your glutes and never get anywhere because you're missing out on those other muscles of your hip. So let's get into the drill. So this is what everyone is doing. They're sitting on rollers, they're rolling the glutes, and then they're going after their trigger points. They're getting deep into the piriformis muscle directly, they contract and they relax. Ah, and then they'll stretch their hips, so they'll go through external rotation with the hip as much as they can, sit there for hours and hours and hours, do this every day, which you shouldn't have to do. Then they will activate their glutes. Clam shells, I love these, they're really, really good exercise. You will feel your glutes whenever you do this. Absolutely lovely. Mm. So, that is only a couple of elements that they're doing, and they are dealing with symptoms. They're not going after root causes. So, they may help temporarily, but they are not going to fix anything, and you're going to have to keep on doing them, and you're actually gonna to start to get addicted to them. We need more, we need more, we need a lot more. We need more. Hi Jenny. So what we want to do is invent a drill that incorporates all of our elements of hip mobility. So let's go through them now. So Jenny's going to just demonstrate flexion first of all. So this one of you lift the leg up. Then you have adduction, which is when you bring the leg across yourself. You have abduction when you take it away from yourself. You have internal hip rotation and you have external hip rotation, and you also have extension as well. So that's when the hips fully open at the front and your bum is nice and squeezed. So they are all of our elements. How do we put them into a drill? We just do them. Watch this. So Jenny's gonna hug the post. That's gonna stop her from moving with the torso. Okay, so we're just looking to look at the hip for this one. You can do this right now. This is so easy to do. Just make sure that you try it at your own level. So don't try and go right up as high as Jenny can right at the start. Just see where you get to, and then you can sort of progress from there. So first thing she's gonna do is lift the leg up nice and slowly. Pause there for a second. Then she's gonna bring the leg across herself. Then she's gonna go out as far as she can without letting her hips move. Then she's going to try and keep the knee where it is and rotate inwards. Then she's going to try and just push back a little bit. Imagine she was pushing into a wall behind her. Then she's gonna bring the leg back down. And then she's gonna do that in reverse. So she's gonna push the leg back. She's gonna lift it up as high as she can. She's gonna bring it back around. Then she's gonna bring it right across the body like that, okay? So if Jenny just carries on there and just keeps going through the reps, I'll explain a little bit further. What we're starting to do here is just develop all of the muscles in the hips. So they need to move in all different ways and be able to, you know, work together. So this is going to start to challenge all of those muscles and it's going to give you more wiggle room as well. So you don't get a lot of hip movement from running or squats or deadlifts or anything like that. This is going to start to make your hip work more like a hip. So this is the stuff that your hip really wants to do. And if you give it this stuff, you can 
get yourself rid of sciatica symptoms, IT band syndromes, any IT band syndromes, if there's a list of them, and get you rid of all of those like silly little injuries and niggles that you may have, even knee pain, just any of the silly stuff can start to be taken away from this, especially back pain as well, it's a really good one for back pain. So you're just challenging all of the muscles in the hip. Little ways you can start to play around with this as well is you can create tension in each of the positions. So Jenny could just use your hand at different points to try and push your own leg down and fight against it. And if you find one side is incredibly tighter than the other one, you want to spend a bit more time on that side. So say Jenny was like trying to go, she goes up and then she tried to go out and she just wasn't able to internally rotate there at all. Her torso would start to lean a little bit. She can use that as a progression to help her to get more range. So if she leans her body over and gets the knee as high as she can, then brings her body back up again, Boom, that's how you can start to do that. And you may feel a bit of cramping and stuff like that. If you do, just shake it off and give it another go. So make sure to do it for five to 10 reps each side. And you can either do it for three rounds or you could just try once a day, build it up progressively and see how you feel based on the day after, okay? Today we have talked about the piriformis muscle, but hopefully you can see that this concept applies to everything in your entire body. So every injury, every niggle that you may have is going to be guided by you having better movement with the joints rather than getting obsessed with individual muscles. So always think joints, not just muscles. If you found this video helpful, please share it with someone that you think that may um, benefit from it as well. And if you have any questions, please feel free to message us.